Hello friend, as with almost every game out there, Terraria is one full of cheese. No no, not food cheese, but game cheese. And some of it is pretty spicy. Now the Terraria devs don't really like cheese, and they tried to do a crackdown on cheesing bosses and mechanics recently, but the community always seems to find a way. Today I'll be showing you some of the greatest cheese strats Terraria has to offer, and hopefully you can get a slice of the delicious cheese for yourself. I'm Zuzucorn and I aim to entertain you, encourage you, and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzucorn family. Let's begin. The first cheese strat on this list is pretty well known. In fact, it's so well known that it has evolved into pretty much being the standard practice now. And I'm talking about bombs. Bombs in the Corruption or Crimson when you're going after those elusive Shadow Heart loots. I don't really want to say Shadow Orbs and Crimson Hearts all the time, so Shadow Hearts it is. You might be wondering, but hey, how's that cheese? Isn't that the intended strategy? Well, surprisingly, it's not. Haven't you found it weird that you could never mine Ebonstone or Crimstone? Well, that's because bombs are actually a skip. The intended strategy here is to kill a boss like the Eye of Cthulhu, then get the Dryad to spawn in. Then, you go buy some of these. Purification Powder. I know, I didn't know this existed too, until I needed the tax collector. Anyway, you're supposed to throw some of these onto Ebonstone to purify them, then slowly mine and make your way to Shadow Hearts. But well, clearly the intended strategy has faded into non-existence, unless you're someone who plays completely spoiler-free and only relies on NPC prompts. Bombs are pretty much the default go-to nowadays, so the cheese has evolved and matured into standard practice. Interesting, huh? But I know this isn't why you clicked on this video. You're here for the juicy stuff, the delicious cheese. And well, nothing is more delicious than the Tome of Infinite Cheese. I don't know who first thought of this strategy, but I'll leave a link to Leviathan's video, which was where I first saw this. The Tome of Infinite Cheese, I mean, Wisdom, is a magic weapon dropped by the Ogre Boss in the Old One's Army event. It can summon a tornado if you right click, which moves along the ground, damaging enemies in its way. Sounds cool, huh? What's even cooler is using this against the Destroyer, the most cheesable mechanical boss. Basically, all you need to do is this. Grab some mage gear for damage and mana, summon the Destroyer while on a nice flat area, then right click away. Voila, Destroyer dead. This is on expert difficulty, but it works pretty much equally as fast on Master Mode too. Just check out Leviathan's video for that. So yes, the Tome of Infinite Cheese, one of the most delicious cheese we have in Terraria. If you liked shredding the Destroyer with that, you're in for another surprise. Ever heard of the Daedalus Stormbow? You must have, almost every mainstream Terraria YouTuber has used it. What about Holy Arrows? These are some nice arrows that summon stars from above with each arrow. Yep, each arrow. So combine that with the Daedalus Stormbow, which rains down lots of arrows, you have lots of stars. This one isn't exactly a cheese strat, but more of a really strong combination. This absolutely destroys the destroyer. Haha, <laughs> destroys the destroyer. Jokes. This got nerfed pretty hard in the 1.4 update by removing the pierce on the summon stars, but the fact is, it still does so much to the multi-segmented destroyer, and it still feels so unfair and cheesy. So if you ever have any issues with the destroyer, which I don't know why you ever would, you definitely have to give this one a try. The euphoria is pretty unrivaled, and it makes you crave more. More cheese. The next one is kind of similar, not really cheese, but a really strong strat that allows you to turn off your brain, and still destroy everything with little effort. And that's the strat of using crystal darts with the respective dart gun of your world evil. Crystal darts are insanely easy to make, you only need crystal shards from the underground hollow. This makes them really easy to amass thousands of. These darts ricochet and auto-target enemies after the first bounce, and they can hit multiple enemies too. So all you need to do is to aim at an enemy, or the ground actually, 
and everything will die. You can randomly shoot it like a madman and it still gets the job done. If you're feeling lazy, this is the strat to go. It shreds invasions, it shreds the destroyer, it keeps enemies back and it's so easy to get into. Great strategy. Next up, what more to satisfy your cravings for insane broken cheese strats more than the titanium armor and fetid back nest strategy. If you haven't seen this one before, you're in for a real treat. Since the 1.4 update, titanium armor has had its set effect change to something other than the shadow dodge effect. It now summons shards to defend you and deal damage whenever you hit an enemy with an attack. So this armor set is now great for weapons with really low use times, like guns and the fetid back nest. All you have to do here is get a full set of titanium armor, the melee set to be specific, then grab a cross necklace to increase your invincibility frames, then just go ham. This strategy got an indirect nerf by limiting the effectiveness of melee speed on the fetid back nest, but it's still pretty broken with titanium armor. And if you don't want to go for melee speed, which has diminishing returns, just go for damaging modifiers. Remember Plantera? That annoying jungle boss that moves around and shoots stuff at you? That annoying boss that you need to blow up a huge area for? Well, you don't need to do that anymore. Just grab damage reducing buffs, some regen with heart lanterns, honey and other stuff, then just stand there and hold down left click. Yep, that's all there is to it. You might die if you're on master mode, but this is pretty good for expert and below. Pretty effortless really. Once again, I'm not too sure who originally came up with this idea, but I've been seeing it around Reddit or YouTube shorts and stuff, so yeah, not my idea. This strategy is so broken that you can do it for any e-mobile boss, so it works great for Golem as well. Cheese at its finest. Once you beat Plantera, you can do this with the Psycho Knife, a direct upgrade to the Fetid Back Nest, which you can get from the Solar Eclipse. Absolutely disgusting. Just make sure you have enough defense, health, regen, and all that. Speaking of Golem, which is the hardest boss in Terraria, so difficult that devs had to make it look a lot more threatening with a new paint job, you can cheese this one too. Pretty easily actually. All you have to do is have a nice platform near the top, summon Golem, then just run back and forth while hitting it. Sure, you might get hit once in a while, but it's usually not enough to kill you. If you want to be extra safe, just wire two teleporters together so you can perpetually run in one direction. That way the lasers will be sure to miss you. I'm pretty sure that we were supposed to fight Golem head on while under the threat of temple traps, but um, wire cutter. Let's now bring it down a little to cover something I'm not too sure counts as cheese or not. For this one, did you know that you can use the spiky balls from Goblin Invasions to destroy the Goblin Invasion? These things pierce a couple of enemies and deal multiple hits before disappearing, which is really good for invasions early on. You can literally kill a few goblins, grab a few spiky balls, then use it against them, getting even more spiky balls in the process. So if you're ever unprepared for the goblin invasion, this is all you need to do. Unless you're in hard mode and there's a goblin summoner somewhere. If that happens, then good luck with that. This does seem like it's a rather intentional feature, but I just have this feeling that a lot of people don't use them. I've seen so many people ignore the spiky balls and keep trying to brute force through the invasion and then die over and over again. If you're not doing a class playthrough and you're caught off guard by goblin invasions, just use their balls. Use the goblin balls to defeat the goblins. Then you can get your very own bald loser. So back to some juicy stuff. The Dread Nautilus is a hard mode mini boss summoned when fishing at the ocean during a blood moon. This mini boss is jam packed with attacks, able to summon blood squids, and even capable of reflecting projectiles back at you. With such a strong toolkit, it's no wonder that it drops one of the best summoner weapons in the game, the Sanguine Staff. With such a difficult and speedy boss, how will we ever defeat it? Well, with a box. Not surprisingly, many things in Terraria can be solved with the ever-popular box. What you need here is similar to that Plantera setup. Get lots of regen, lots of defense, and as much damage reduction as you can get. Then grab some weapon that either summons stuff from above, or can pass through walls. Fish up your Blood Nautilus, 
and just destroy it from the safety of this box. Well sure, you will get hit when it spins, but that's the only thing that hits you. This is much harder to pull off on master mode, but it is still possible with enough defense, regen, and damage reduction. So yeah, make a box and negate every other gimmick that it has. I've got a more detailed video for this method, which you can check out if you want to. Next up, we have something that was so cheesable using boxes that the developers took the effort to code in anti-box cheese. I'm talking about the Martian Saucer. This mini-boss is part of the Martian Invasion, and it drops many wonderful weapons and loot. For example, it drops the Cosmic Harky, one of the few infinite flying mounts in the game. It also drops the Influx Waver, a sword needed for the Zenith if you're going for that. The boss's lasers used to get blocked by a ceiling, but this got specifically changed in 1.4. Fortunately, genius terrarians have found ways around that too. Essentially, every other attack is still blocked by a ceiling, so why stop that? What we have to do now is have a long corridor with some teleporters in case. Then just get the rhythm down, then you can still cheese the heck out of this boss. This one is a little more delicate to pull off, so do check out my other videos if you want to know more. But hey, you can get that UFO mount without even fighting the UFO directly. That's honestly pretty amazing. The last cheese method I want to cover is pretty well known and popular, and it works against almost every single flying boss. This method only requires you to have anti-fall damage and gravitation potions. Having trouble with the twins or duke fish run? Well, then this method is just for you. All you need to do here is drink the gravitation potion, flip gravity, then go ham. Once you're near the top, flip gravity again, then continue blasting. Now, I don't recommend going all the way to the top, cause the low gravity in space could ruin you, but the method is just this simple. Even with Duke Fishron, this is some pretty easy to pull off cheese. Falling just naturally allows you to avoid so many things, so why not just fall? Just fall downwards, then fall upwards, then eventually kill the boss. Easy. This cheese is so great that I think Calamity has an anti-gravitation cheese mechanic in there. Just make sure you have anti-fall damage through a lucky horseshoe or wings. The worst thing you'd want is to fall then go splat on the ground. Well, Terraria has so many other crazy strategies that I just don't have the time to mention here. I've covered some of the easier strats to pull off, so you can give it a try yourself. But if you're into the crazily technical and mechanical stuff, you can go find some good videos on YouTube. I don't remember where I've seen it, but I think I saw someone one-shot the Empress of Light using the Horseman's Blade. So yeah, pretty fun stuff you can do in this game. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too, for more Terraria guides and other stuff. Do follow me on social media if you want, and join the Discord server if you want to say hi. This has been Suzukorn. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye bye.